No, it's uh, just as a short disclaimer, so we, we're going to record just the demo part. Um, so for the Q&A later, we switch it off again. Thanks. Thank you, Adam. OK, so let's go to the code. We're going to start from here. So in order to explain the custom code deployment, we're going to start with this pipeline. I think if you have like been in previous community hours, you have seen it before. We're going to start with an example with that, like with a step that loads the data. Then we're going to train it, evaluate, do a deployment trigger to, to verify if like our evaluation score is better th than a specific score. If yes, we're going to deploy. But like the different here is that now we have this sort of external code that's not actually a step, but like a separated code called custom code for deployment that we need to integrate with our deployment. And like for our stack, by the way, if you know what, if you don't know what is a stack in ZML, uh, stack is like a set of configuration and like all required stuff to connect with tools and like infrastructure. That's where a stack is in ZML. And like we have different component. We're gonna start explaining each of these. We have a local orchestrator, which is responsible for orchestrating and running like the steps and everything like that. We have a local metadata store, which will be responsible for saving all the metadata regarding our pipelines or, or anything related to ZML, an artifact store. And in this case, we're going to use a GCP artifact store, which is remote. And that's very important like to do a deployment because this tool, like KeyServe and Silicon Core, won't be able to load the model from our local machine science we, are, we have in local orchestrator. Uh, a local secrets manager, and that's also very important because we're going to use it to save the service account that give access to Silicon Core and KeyServe, like to load the model and the code from the artifact store. A GCP container registry, like to save the custom Docker image that we're going to build for this deployment. And finally, the model deployer, which is like either the KeyServe and Silicon. OK, so the first thing, uh, I have already like these dependencies installed to not like take a lot of time. I'm going to start with Zenimal in it. By the way, if, uh, you're going to find like all this in the example. It's on, on our repo. You can just like do Zenimal after installing Zenimal. Zenimal example, poly, key server deployment, and you're going to find a readme that explains everything. OK, we start with that. Now let's start registering. We're going to start with the artifact store, actually. OK, like now that. The second thing is the secrets manager. Because, and by the way, we are starting with KeyServe because, like, there is a difference between using the model. We're going to have two stacks and test, like, the both of them. So now we have the secrets manager. We need to get, like, the ingress URL that we will be using to run predictions. And now let's register our model deployer. And for the model deployer, as you can see, we have a Kubernetes context like which Kubernetes cluster we are using with, uh, with KeyServe, a Kubernetes namespace where the models will be deployed, the ingress URL, and the secrets, which is responsible, which is responsible for giving access to the artifact store. OK, now our model deployer is being registered. It's done. It's, the next thing is the container registry, which is very important for the custom Docker image. OK, there is something. OK, there is one mistake here. Sorry for that. Let's register this. OK, now our container registry is done. The final thing is create a stack or register a stack, which we'll be calling local GCP keyserve stack, and like with all these different components. OK, once that is done, we need we have like this service account, which is like the one that have access that will give access to the artifact store. We need to register that one with our secrets manager. OK, it's being registered. OK, it's done. And finally, now let's go to the example before start running. So this is our example. And by the way, this is different than all other ZML examples because, like, it's somehow like big example. It has a lot of a lot of use cases and stuff like that. And like to make it very clear and like to make it simple, it's split into four uh, four folders. 
like for each model deployer and each framework to make it easier because like each framework has its own custom code and like once that is ready we can do python run key serve pytorch which is this one and like once that starts running let's have a discussion about the pipeline and the actual custom code okay now that start running uh, as we said earlier, this is our the pipeline that allow the trainer evaluator deployment trigger and deployer, and like actually the difference here between the normal deployment and this deployer is this custom deploy parameters, and like if we got if we are using if we are doing a normal deployment, we usually would have here like predictor based uh, on which framework we are using. So it's either TensorFlow or PyTorch. And like that would deploy the model itself without any extra stuff or any extra pre-processing or post-processing code. But like for this, we do have a new parameter, which is like custom uh, deploy parameter. And we pass like the path for the actual custom predict function. We're gonna talk about it like in a few seconds to this custom deploy parameters. And ZML will take care of like, getting that code, uh, packaging everything into a Docker image, and then start deployment with whatever tool we are using. And like now let's have a bit of discussion about this PyTorch custom code deploy. As you know, like if we are deploying a PyTorch model, we would usually need to pass it a Torch tensor to the model, which means we need somehow to do some sort of pre-processing once we have our let's call it image in in this example we are using using digits which like uh data set we have our image it's it can be a numpy array but then we need to like to make it a torch tensor and that mean we need somehow to like to do some sort of pre-processing into our uh, pytorch model and like what actually the user should do when they want to, tr to try like custom deployment just write this custom predict and like that's it you need to write a custom predict and by custom predict you will that function expect to have like model and the request for the model we're gonna like discuss this in a bit actually ZNML takes care of loading the model into memory so all you have to do is like just write the custom predict and that model artifact that trained model in our pipeline will be loaded in, in, the, in the memory for you and you just need to write the custom code responsible for doing pre-processing or post-processing. In this case, as we can see, this is the pre-processing. It normalized, then transform it, then and squeeze and return the value in Flout. Then we're gonna uh, do a prediction and then post-processing to return actually the exact class. And okay, now that we have that, let's take a look to actually like how does ZenML do that? So for both Sild like Sildon and Keyserve, we have actually like, if we want to do a custom deployment, we can create this custom class, which like have a different functions applied. And like one of them, usually the normal way is to package everything into a Docker file and a Docker image, which have like the model artifact or like whatever checkpoints we are using and the code itself. But like to make it simpler and like just to, easy to start with and deploy the models without too much configuration. ZenML actually have built this ZenML custom model. And what does that do is try using, because like we are using the materializers uh, to save the models. We have this materializer that actually takes care of loading the model into the memory. And then in the predict function, it will try to call that exact path. We give it in the pipeline for uh, in the deploy step for the prediction the custom prediction function and after that we're going to use like this extra code to make it to make like this file is the entry point of our deployment and it will be something like this so as you can see we have like this is will be entry point for the docker image we are calling this exact class and giving it like the extra parameter we want now the deployment actually started if we want to take a look to like what happened as you can see we have like all different steps and like once we reached the custom model deployer we actually needed a docker image to like to package everything including this custom code and that's exactly what ZenML do 
just using that simple step and this simple function, it will first verify which which orchestrator we are using. So if we are using a local one, it will try to create a new Docker image. If we are using a remote one, it will just try to use the same Docker image that was already built in order to save time. And like once that starts building, it will start the deployment. And as we can see here, like our model is deployed. And this is like the address and the host name for it. And at the same time, it started another pipeline because like we tried to do both at the same time. The other pipeline is for the inference. And what does it do is actually, let me, let's take a look into it. So the other pipeline actually like takes a digit image and try to run the inference on it using that deployed model with this custom code. Now, the good part is that we can do something here. We run ZNML model deployers model list. Model deployer model list. Like to see what models are deployed in our current stack. Okay, we have this one. And now if we try to do the same thing, ZNML model deployer, then models, and we try to do logs and give it the address for this deployed model. We can see that actually like what happened is in inside that docker image that we built when we called the entry point it started the key serve server as they call it and that actually like loaded everything including the model and uh, our custom code and it's now ready to run prediction and like we have already done one prediction and actually it's very similar to seldon we can if we want to try that we would just switch like the stack which includes switching the model deployer and if we take a look to like seldon pytorch would find out like that it's very very similar actually for the custom code deployments it's the same there is no difference on that the one difference actually we're gonna find between sensor between seldon core and keyserve is on that class like the class responsible for starting the deployment and like this, actually, you would find more about about this custom class in the documentation of Keyserv and Seldon. But like, if you just want to start, you can just specify like do a pipeline, give it, uh, do a training, give the model into the deployment step, and give it like the custom code you want. And then ML will take care of packaging, deploying, and handling everything for you. Uh, also, like just small hint for advanced user that they may feel like this class is a bit limited and this is not enough they want to do extra stuff not just like load a model maybe some custom code that's not even uh running predictions on models you can actually like create your own class just like of course it it, it must like follow keyserve and sell down documentation and then create a new custom step just like the one ZNML using to deploy everything and like give it this entry point for, for your class and you can deploy anything with ZNML. That's it for the presentation. If you have any questions, please. Amazing. All right, that was, that was really fantastic. Thank you. So for everybody watching on YouTube, we can stop recording now um, so that we can have a discussion. Let's go.